first of all, just to echo uh, what uh, a number of the other speakers have said, uh, really to get uh, strong development across Africa, uh, a lot more regional integration at all levels is required. I think there's one statistic that's very telling, uh, which is the fact that if Lagos, the largest city in Nigeria, were a country, uh, both in terms of population and in terms of GDP, it would be bigger than 22 other African yeah. countries. Um, and that just goes to show the, the, the relatively small size of a number of African countries, uh, both in terms of uh, the population, which is the market, and also in terms of the GDP. What this means is that you can't get uh, decent economies of scale in, in, in a number of these countries if you look at those markets on their own. The only way to do that is to get, is to have some sort of integration. Um, just to take an example, you know, if you have a small country, um, and just at random, I'll just say Equatorial Guinea, which has a population of 400,000 uh, people, but actually produces a lot of gas, technically they could be very efficient in terms of generating power. But that country is not going to be able to use all the power. You know, the only way um, uh, they could do that is by selling it across borders. Now, um, uh, in addition, uh, if you look at trade flows within Africa, only about 15% of, uh, of, of trade intra, is intra-African trade, which um, while somewhat reflecting the sort of structure of the economies where manufactured goods generally have to come from outside Africa is also. Um, so, so that's on the one hand, and that just, I was just saying that to try and underscore the importance of these things. In terms of actually financing them though, uh, in a way it's really quite boring what I have to say, which is that uh, you know, the things you have to look at in terms of financing one of these projects uh, is, um, is more, uh, more or less the same things you need to look at in financing a non-cross-border infrastructure project. Um, so, except that, of course, they get far more complicated because whenever you're adding more countries, you're not, you know, if you add two countries, you're not doubling the complexity, you're actually squaring it. And if you add three countries, you're cubing it rather than tripling it. Um, but it's things like, uh, it's things like, um, uh, regulatory environment, so most infrastructure obviously is highly regulated in one way or the other. There's a lot of permitting that's necessary. Uh, it can be quite complicated. When you're dealing with uh, two or three or more countries, each of which has its own requirements, um, then um, you know, that just gets extremely difficult. Uh, in terms of market, you have to look at the market and the sizing and who's going to be doing the offtake. Again, you need to look at each market with its own sort of peculiarities. Um, so these are things that you would, you know, you would generally look at in, in a regular uh, project. Um, as um, uh, Bruno um, mentioned, uh, we and DEG and some other um, institutions finance the main one fiber optic cable, which is a cable that runs from Portugal down the west to coast of Africa to Lagos. Uh, it's increased the capacity in that route by about tenfold and uh, was completed you know, exactly on time and to budget, which is somewhat unusual uh, in Africa. <laughs> um, not just in Africa, actually, in most places uh, that uh, you're looking at uh, infrastructure projects. Uh, what was the real... Uh, differentiating factor uh, between these guys and some of the other people who've been looking at similar projects. And again, it's not something new. It's been alluded to by at least uh, two of the other three speakers. It's really attention to detail. You know, I mean, um, it's very easy to have a kind of high level plan that you want to do this. But you know, if you're running a fiber optic cable, for example, through the territorial waters of about 15 different countries, you need to actually get permits. Even if you're not landing, you need to actually get permits uh, from those countries. And you can imagine getting a permit from one government and then multiplying that by 15 times. I mean, this is a humongous um, project management job in and of itself. And you know, making sure that all those details are adhered to and doing it properly is very important. And as a financier, you also need to check this because the worst thing that can happen 
is that your you know, ship is laying the fiber and then it gets to you know, country X and then it's like suddenly, uh oh, you don't have the right permit here. You know, because the ship can't actually just you know, hang around waiting for a week while you, <coughs> while you do it. So I think that's, um, I think that's very important. Uh -huh. Um, I could go on, but uh, I won't. In terms of um, what can be done to, uh, to, to sort of foster these projects, I, I would make two points. And again, these are things that have been alluded to by um, previous speakers. Generally, if you look at successful cross-border projects in Africa, they have been done by the private sector. They have been done to suit uh, you know, real commercial needs. And I'm thinking about things like the Chad Cameroon pipeline, uh, the West Africa gas pipeline, the main one cable. Uh, you could even argue that some of uh, the uh, mo uh, cell phone companies that have okay. created kind of networks across, say, West Africa, you know, represent regional infrastructure. Okay. Uh, they've all been done um, uh, to meet real commercial needs. Now, uh, and I think that um, one important point is really uh, to try as much as possible to take the politics out of this, uh, to take the egos, if you like, out of this, uh, to really focus on you know, what is really going to, what is commercially needed. Uh, one obvious way of testing this is by trying to structure these projects as uh, you know, private sector projects where the, the agencies or the governments are really working as uh, catalysts to facilitate this as opposed to doing the projects themselves, uh, which, you know, often tends to be a tendency in, in, the, in the countries we see. Doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor.